Hi everyone, I'm Shailen with Readsy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to submit short stories to literary magazines. Here's some things to know before sending your story into the world. So lots of literary magazines will have an open submission period, but they'll also hold certain contests throughout the year. A lot of the specifications depend on the magazine. The contest might have a certain theme or lower word count that doesn't apply to the regular submissions, but the winner of the contest will be highlighted in a way that a regular story wouldn't be even if accepted into the magazine. There will also likely be some sort of prize money involved for contest. The downside to this is that submission fees for contests are often a lot higher, sometimes 30 or 35 dollars, whereas a regular submission is often free or quite a bit lower. Some magazines will automatically enter you into their regular submissions if you submit to a contest, but some won't. This is something you just have to check individually. You can submit to both contests and regular submissions. Personally, I like to limit my contest submissions just a little bit and choose maybe a handful I want to enter per year, just because those reading fees can be so so high and they add up pretty quickly. The next question is where to submit. Similarly to when querying agents, it's important to make sure your story is a good match for the specific agent. So if you find somewhere you want to submit, make sure to check their guidelines for specifications on word count, genre, and formatting. If possible, it's always best to pick up an issue of their magazine or read some of their stories online to see what's going to be best suited to this magazine. A great way to find places to submit is to pick up an edition of Best American Short Stories or another similar anthology. In the back of each edition, there's a long index that lists dozens of magazines currently publishing short stories. Almost all magazines run their submissions through the platform Submittable, which makes it really easy to keep track of everything you've submitted. It also makes it really easy to find places to submit, because you can browse upcoming deadlines based on a variety of filters. Finally, Reezy has directories for both magazines and contests with lots of the research on specifications you'd have to do by yourself already done. So both of those will be linked in the description. So now it's time to submit, and it's very possible the magazine is asking you for a cover letter. Now a cover letter is similar in concept to a query letter, but it's much easier to put together. It's very brief and only meant to inform the magazine on the key details of your story, not try to sell them on it. You don't even have to explain what your story is about, and it's best not to. Prism Magazine has one of my favorite guides, and they also have an example, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. All you have to do is state the word count, title, genre if the magazine accepts multiple genres, and state whether or not this is a simultaneous submission. If you have any other important detail, such as if the story was shortlisted for a contest but didn't win, you can also mention that, but otherwise that's really all you need. After introducing your piece, you can provide a brief bio, but again, this can be really short. You can list previous publications if you have any, but magazines also love discovering new voices, so it's all right to simply say that if selected, this would be your first published piece. If you're an alumni of a writing program, this may or may not be something you want to mention. Many lit mags are affiliated with or run out of universities, so in that case it might be a good thing to say, but many run independently and you have no idea if the editor is going to look down on the writing workshop process. Many do, so when in doubt it's best to leave this detail out if it applies to you. It's also common courtesy to mention whether or not your story is a simultaneous submission, which it probably is. At this point, most magazines are totally fine with this, but make sure you mention it in your cover letter. And finally, make sure to personalize the cover letter by addressing it specifically to the editor of the magazine you're submitting to. So now it's time to actually submit. First of all, submit in batches, starting with the magazines you most want to be published with. If you get rejected from all those, then go on to submit to your next year and your next year and so on. This can be a slow process since the wait times can be really long. I'm still waiting to hear back from a magazine I submitted to eight months ago. Next up, make sure your story is formatted properly. Many magazines will remove all your formatting, but others will have specific formatting specifications. One in doubt, always double space and use a standard serif font like Times New Roman. You'll also want to remove all identifying details from the story, such as your name, unless the magazine specifies otherwise. And finally, don't get discouraged. Lit mags only accept a fraction of the stories that are submitted to them. For example, it's statistically more difficult to get a story accepted into Glimmer Train than it is to get accepted it into Harvard Law. Not all magazines are this elite, but if you get one or five or 30 rejection letters, it just means it wasn't a perfect fit for this magazine out of their thousands and thousands of submissions. So that's how to submit stories to literary magazines. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye!